Well, we hope you all had a very Merry Christmas, but today we've got something extra special in one of our best HitFilm users is going to come and do a guest tutorial. If you've been on the forum, you've probably encountered him as Triam, but his actual name is Mike Miller, and he's going to be showing us how you can take a simple 2D image, apply our displacement effect, and make it look like a 3D image. Sounds pretty good. Over to you, Mike. Hi, I'm Mike Miller with Triam Visual, and if you've seen this... What was that? It was HitFilm Pro 2017, that's what it was! Or this. Then you might have seen this. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So here we are in HitFilm 4 Express, and up on screen you can see here I just have a screen grab of a TIE Fighter pilot, a New Order TIE Fighter pilot, that I grabbed off the web. And the entire secret to this effect is the displacement effect. So let's talk about how displacement works, shall we? The way the displace filter in HitFilm works is by displacing pixels vertically or horizontally based on a control map that you feed the displace filter. When using the displace filter, 50% gray does nothing. It's the neutral point. As you move up towards white, it starts increasing the amount of the effect that is placed in, and as you move towards black, it starts inverting the effect. So here you can see with this background graphic, I have a gray background, I have a white displacement, I have a black square here, I have a white square here, and I have this black to white gradient. And that's sitting underneath this TIE Pilot image. And if we come over here to the effects for the TIE Pilot image, we can see that I have displacement set up. And the displacement is using the displacement breakdown map, this, as the layer. Now you can see these controls here for horizontal and vertical displacement are set to red and green. You can set different color channels to affect the displacement, but that's going to depend on what the source image you're using for the map. I'm using black and white, so the image doesn't really matter which uh, channel I use. What this does, it's going to push pixels sideways depending on the motions of this fader and how it interacts with the map below. The max vertical displacement pushes pixels vertically, so I've zeroed out displacement again. What we can see happening here, this black square is pushing pixels over to the right, all the white areas are pushing pixels to the left, and you can see a different push in this area where the gradient is. So as I move this horizontal slider back and forth, really take a look up here where that gradient is, and you can see how the top of the helmet is stretching or compressing depending on which way I push that. Well, that's kind of fun, but that's not very useful, so let's look at something closer to the setup where I actually had for the animation. Here I have the same TIE Fighter pilot photo, but this is the displacement map I have underneath it. I created this in Photoshop, and it's not particularly detailed, but these black areas represent areas farthest away from the camera, and these white areas represent areas closest to the camera. So, when I assign the displacement filter to this photo, and start moving things horizontally, or vertically, you can see how we're starting to get a bit of pseudo 3D depth. Now I can't push the effect too far before the image starts to tear, but with a little bit of keyframing you can get a surprisingly natural motion. So let's go ahead and create one from scratch. Okay, everyone in the world is excited about Rogue One, so let's go ahead and do this picture of Felicity Jones. Now first, I'm going to build a displacement map inside of Photoshop. If you have GIMP or any other photo editing software, that works as well. And later I'm going to show you how to do this directly in HitFilm. Now Felicity is up close to the camera, and she's got this long hallway behind her. And since my displacement map is going to use black to white values to decide what's closest to the camera, I've decided that I'm going to have her be 50% gray, and everything in the hallway behind her is going to fall off to black. So first in Photoshop, I just created a simple circular gradient from black to 50% gray. Then I made another layer and used my lasso tool to draw an outline around Felicity Jones. I filled this to 50% gray, and then I just kind of grabbed a brush tool, and I started using lighter and lighter shades of gray, and I just kind of, well, really scribbled her in, deciding what parts were closer to the camera and using lighter shades of gray for that. When the entire thing was done, 
I went ahead and put a little bit of a blur on it, about 10 pixels, flattened that entire image, saved it as a PNG, and brought it back into HitFilm. Once back in HitFilm, I load up the image of Felicity, load up the displacement map I saved out of Photoshop, assign the displacement effect to the top image, assign the displacement map to the source layer, and then I just kind of, well, play with the values until I get something that looks good. In this case, I decided on more of a subtle motion than the TIE Fighter shot. So what if you don't have Photoshop, GIMP, or any other photo editing software? Just hit Film Express. It's not really any different a process. Starting in HitFilm, I created a composite shot to build my displacement map in. I threw my source image in there as a reference. I used a grade layer and the radial gradient filter to make the same black to 50% gray gradient I made in Photoshop. Then I created a plane, set its values to 50% gray, used the masking tools to trace around that. Once I had that first layer masked out, it was just a question of creating another plane on top of it, setting this one maybe 20 or 30 points higher, again using the masking tool to draw that lighter area in, creating another plane, setting the color of that plane another 20 or 30 points lighter, using the masking tool to draw in the lighter area, and just using planes that were lighter and lighter and lighter to build up the same layers the way I did in Photoshop. Let's take one more quick look at the composite shot where I built my displacement map inside HitFilm. At the bottom, I have my original image of Felicity for reference. And then above her, you can see that I just have a simple grade layer with a radial gradient moving from black to 50% gray. Everything above this up till the top layer are just masked planes. I started with a basic silhouette outlining all of Felicity. And then I just continued moving up using planes of lighter gray values kind of defining areas that I felt were closer to the camera. So here's the base, and you can see I've left everything on her backpack and her far shoulder farther away from the camera. This second layer includes most of her hair and everything else, and this third layer is where I'm starting to outline her forehead, her face, and the front of her neck. This next layer fills in some more of her hair highlights, her nose, and the cheek closest to the camera, and fills out more of the left side of her torso. On top of that, we're starting to get closer to her shoulder, and then just filling in closer to her shoulder and the left side of her torso, and then finally her arm, and then one more highlight of her arm around the arm patch. This grade layer on top just has a simple 10 pixel blur on it to give a little bit of softness, and then this entire composite shot was dragged into my final animation. After that, it's just a matter of putting the displacement map in, adding the displacement map effect, and tweaking the values until it looks right. Something like this. And that's pretty much how to use displacement to add three-dimensional depth to a two-dimensional image. There are other ways you could go from here. For example, the image that I used was 1600 by 800 pixels, but I created a 1280 by 720 composite shot to build it in. So I created a point, parented my image and my displacement map to it, and took advantage of that extra space to move things around a little bit for a bit of a fake camera move. It looks like this. If you have HitFilm Pro, or the atmospheric lighting add-on for HitFilm Express, you could even take this another step farther. In this case, I tried to see what happened if I added some auto volumetrics. For the center position, I just kind of pushed the point where it felt good and just kind of adjusted it by eye. So I hope you find this method of adding three-dimensional depth to two-dimensional pictures useful. I'm Mike Miller with Triam Visual. Happy New Year!